Hello. Um, so I'm making this video in response to this nice little video which uh, Raphael put up a couple of days ago. And this video discusses um, the subpixel accuracy um, when using Aruko's outside corner routine versus subpixel accuracy using the uh, often favorite uh, OpenCV inner corner routine, uh, which is called corner subpix. Now, um, a lot of people, uh, myself included, um, would believe that the, uh, this routine gives you a more accurate um, estimation of the, the true position of the corner within the image than um, you could get alone with just the outside. And, and what Raphael's video presents is that um, perhaps that hypothesis is not true, perhaps there is a negligible difference between these two routines, and perhaps even sometimes, um, the, as shown in this, in this screenshot, the error could be slightly higher on, on this routine than it can be on this one. Now, um, I thought that uh, there might be other ways of testing this, um, and there might be other conditions which might affect the accuracy of, of these routines. Um, so um, what I'd like to do is like to try a test where I put different lighting into the scene to see how the corner position deviates. So which one is more robust um, to lighting changes. We'd like to also do this with the scale and rotation and things like that, but um, this particular test allows us to uh, compare like for like. Uh, the markers are in the same position and the cameras are in the same position. So what we do is we um, take these two markers, one of these winged star markers, and one is just the standard marker. And then we move a light around the scene and try to um, create some differences in the way the marker is seen in the camera um, without changing any of the important geometry. Okay, so if we um, try to look at the results of this, um, uh, we can see here, um, these are all the found uh, markers. And then we have a kind of summary view where we can look at the deviation. And if we look at the deviation readings, um, we're seeing readings of about uh, 0.115 here, 0.04 here, 0.07 here, 0.07. So it seems in general less than 0.1, except for this corner, um, of pixels of uh, deviation. And if we zoom in, you can see what that deviation looks like. It's kind of like a little blur of, of where it thinks that corner is. And if we compare that from the winged markers to the non-winged markers, we get 0 0.12, 0 0.11, 0 0.18, 0 0.11. So in general, above 0 0.1 um, uh, error in, in deviation. So here is like uh, the median uh, is around 0 0.7, and here the median is around uh, 0 0.12, um, I guess, around, yeah, around 0 0.12. Um, so that's uh, on the order of almost like two times the deviation. Now, um, what, what happens if we try to take this um, uh, to a little bit more uh, extreme set. So here we um, here we look at maybe a more extreme lighting situation. Um, and then how does that deviation change? Uh, how robust are we still? Um, so let me just pull up that result. Uh, I think that's this one here. Um, so uh, again, what we do is we, we have the uh, all the captures, and we look for the deviation. And here we start to see quite a more marked difference. So here we've got like 0 0.1, 0 0.11, 0 0.05, 8, uh, and 0 0.07 um, versus much higher results, like 0 0.38, 0 0.217, 0 0.37, 0 0.4. So here the median deviation is around 0 0.3 pixels or, or above. Um, and here the, de the median deviation is around 0 0.1 pixels. So there is like a three times more deviation um, given drastically different lighting conditions when you're using these outside corners. So to me, um, this suggests that uh, it's important to consider using this routine if accuracy is important to you. Um, I, it'd be great also to try to consider how robust this is when it's viewed from different positions. Like if you could project the viewed position of the corner back into 3D space and compare that 3D point, um, the deviation of that 3D point, um, and those are the further tests. But anyway, um, I just think that this perhaps this suggests uh, there might be more to the story than um, has been demonstrated in Raphael's existing test. Um, it's not as rigorous here statistically as his approach. Um, but um, anyway, I think it, it keeps the discussion open. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.